Hey everybody, Andrew here from ASIC Basics again. Today we're going to go ahead and talk about some of the dangers and uh, warning signs you have when you're crypto mining. As you can see from the image here, this is actually the speed controller to one of my inline duct fans. And if you notice, it's melted apart and probably caught on fire when I didn't notice it. Big things to look out for are making sure that everything that we use, every component we use, has definitely got proper ETL or UL ratings on it and they're not just stamped on it. So we're going to go ahead and tear this apart and walk through a little lesson on how these speed controllers work and then some of the danger and warning signs we can look for. So what we decided to use was this TerraBloom or some Chinese knockoff of the TerraBloom inline duct fan. You can see it uses 205 watts of 120 AC power, which puts us at a little under 2 amps. So not tremendous amount of power when you calculate that out. So what went wrong? Well, melting went wrong. As you can see, I've taken the knob off here, but definitely the package on that significantly deformed. Uh, luckily, I caught it before it actually caught on fire. Well, I'll actually say it shut down and shorted out before it caught on fire, luckily. Um, we look at the knob and we look at the rheostat stem itself and it doesn't appear to be damaged so trying to figure out where the fire or melting first occurred. We look at the back side of it and you can see that definitely the back side of the circuit board, back side of the rheostat is what got the hottest as it started charring and melting through. Now we go ahead and open it up and you can see everything inside is just completely charred. In fact I had a very difficult time trying to even figure out what circuit board this was uh, so that I could go online and start getting schematics and specifications. So I kind of had to do my best to figure it out. So what I'll do is I'll walk through a standard circuit that uses a triac, which I think this was, and we'll try to explain what happened and why we had this potential disaster. All right, so we have a standard dimmer circuit here using a BT139 triac. You can see that with the voltage coming in, you've got one line going directly to your load, in this case a light bulb. In our case, it's a duct fan. And then the other line goes through the small circuit here, which is essentially controlled by the triac and the potentiometer there. Now, the difference in, I used rheostat before, a lot of times those can be used interchangeably as long as you're only using two leads of the potentiometer, uh, because a rheostat only has two, whereas a potentiometer has three. So, what does this all mean? Well, essentially, you're, as you're dialing the potentiometer in, what you're essentially doing is having the triac chop off part of the waveform. The more of the AC waveform you chop off, the dimmer the light bulb will be, or the slower the duct fan would be. As you increase that, obviously you can go back to the full load, where the light bulb can be completely bright or the duct fans running at full power. One of the things that you need to ensure is that the triac, which is handling a lot of power, depending on your setting, has its heat properly dissipated. Now, if the heat isn't properly dissipated on this, it's going to start having a large thermal effect on whatever the packaging is. And as you could see from what we've got, the thermal effect was it started melting and potentially causing a catastrophic fire that was occurring in our little Bitcoin farm. In addition to making sure you have good heat dissipation so you don't cause this, you also need to make sure that the dimmer circuit is rated at the power you're going to be drawing. Here's an example of what one looks like. Now this one particular is rated up to, I believe, 300 watts. Now obviously our fan said it only draws up to 200 watts, but being a Chinese knockoff, I'm not exactly sure that's true. The other thing we run into is the workmanship. Now, I went ahead and opened up the fan after this was all done just to check to see if I could replace this with a straight cord instead of using my own or uh, store-bought uh, dimmer circuit. And look at here. Notice that they didn't even bother soldering or capping off or doing any sort of proper AC connection on this. So this is actually extremely dangerous. So this gives me a lot of confidence that the problem I had in my dimmer circuit was probably related to the workmanship as well. So here are a few stamps you might see. Now, UL, Underwriters Lab, and ETL, Electrical Testing Labs, are basically both US-based and essentially the same. You might also see CSA, 
or CE. Now, CSA is a Canadian standard, and CE is essentially a European standard. But they're all equivalent, and anything stamped with any of these should be a proper, safe, certified product that you can trust. I hope you found this video useful. Please visit ASICBasics.com. Go ahead and subscribe and follow me on YouTube and feel free to hit me up with any questions, comments, or videos or information you'd like to see.